lady here welcome back to our channel everybody and welcome back to our tribe guys i want to welcome all of my new subscribers to the tribe guys right now i'm going to start on part two of the stolen series reading the book written by my good friend rebecca petty um if you did not see part one, I read the prologue and talked about the book and the author. If you have not seen part one, I encourage you to go back and read it. And at the end of this video, I will tag part one. Today, I'm going to start with reading chapter one of the book. Chapter 1 Saturday, May 15th, 1999, 2 p.m. It should have been a beautiful day. A cake, four candles, balloons, and a bunch of kids running around the play place at McDonald's. Laughter and screams of delight presents, smiles, and a hug from a friend. Small shoes lined up on the shelves, leaps into the ball pit, a place that brings squeals of pleasure from children and cringes from parents who know that socks, french fries, chicken nuggets, and bits of hamburger lie beneath the sea of colored balls. Kristen's fourth birthday party at McDonald's is a success. She was especially thrilled that her best friend, Victoria, is there. The two girls had attended preschool together since they were one year old. Victoria, a little girl with dark hair and shimmering blue eyes, giggles as she takes my youngest daughter by the hand and pulls her towards the play place. As I watch the children playing, I make a mental note to myself to call Andy that evening and let her wish her wish her baby sister a happy birthday. Andy, my 12-year-old daughter, had recently decided that she wanted to live with her father for a while after her new baby half-brother had been born. After the party, my husband Chris, my middle daughter Melanie, Kristen, and I decided to go to the local rural fire department for their annual picnic. My mother, Anne, an emergency medical technician by the rural town of Collinsville, Oklahoma, had insisted that it would be a great way to end the day. We didn't regret the decision. There were free hot dogs, games, and prizes. We watched Tulsa Life Flight land their helicopter, and the kids are thrilled to be able to explore the inside of the aircraft. One of the paramedics from the flight service asked if it is okay to take Kristen for a helicopter ride since it is her fourth birthday. She looks at me with anticipation. Would you like to take a ride in the helicopter? Yes, can I, she asks. If you want to, I say. She nods. The pilot scoops her up in his arms and whisks her away. The helicopter blades begin to churn frantically as the chopper lifts off the ground. 
Kristen waves to me with her chubby baby hand. Her, my hair whipped wildly as I watch her little face peering from the helicopter window. It grows smaller and smaller the higher it goes. The dust and debris whirls like an Oklahoma tornado. The craft hovers momentarily. She is waving and smiling when the aircraft shoots forward. For a moment, panic gripped my heart. What if they crash? I could never live with myself if anything happened to one of my children. I shake off the thought and wave back at my incredibly brave four-year-old. This got me thinking about all three of my daughters and how they were very similar yet so different. Andy, the eldest, is strong-willed and extroverted. Melanie is more of an introvert. I glanced around and she is swinging on the swing set waving up at the helicopter. Kristen is a mixture of both of her sisters and she is set apart all at the same time. Genetics is a strange thing. I watch the helicopter become a dot in the sky and my mind wanders back 12 years to the beginning of the road of motherhood for me. I was 16, a kid, when I missed my period, and lo and behold, the pea stick turned blue. I was pregnant. I was much too young to be running around having unprotected sex. It was September 1986. Truth be told, I needed and craved discipline. However, the story continues with all the breathless abandon of a bad teenage problem novel. Greg Brewer was my high school sweetheart. He had graduated from high school the previous spring and we had plans to marry after I graduated. The baby sped things up. After the drama of telling our parents that I was pregnant and calming everyone down from the fact that I had ruined my life and would never go to college or even graduate from high school, I have since done both. I gave birth to a little girl at 6.06 p.m. on April 10th, 1987. We named her Andrea Nicole. One of the first things I noticed was her small, small nose, a tiny nub, settled on the tip of her face. I inspected her body after she was born and was in awe that something so precious and so wonderful had been entrusted to me. Giving birth was the most painful thing I ever experienced. That quickly forgot when they laid my six pound, four ounce daughter in my arms. For the first time, I felt like I'd done something right. And I knew the birth of this child would impact my life in a huge way. I just had no idea at the time how huge that impact would be. Andy was 20 months old when I gave birth to a second daughter, Melanie. Turns out the two girls were the only good thing that came out of that shotgun marriage. We divorced after four years of marriage. 
After the divorce, I left Arkansas with the girls, and life was pretty good for the three of us. We moved to Collinsville, Oklahoma, a suburb of Tulsa. I began working as an emergency medical technician and enrolled in paramedic school. Several years later, I remarried a firefighter named Chris DeMauro. We met in July of 1992. He was teaching an emergency medical technician, technician refresher course at the vocational school I was attending. I was late for class. I tried to slip into the room unnoticed. He called me out and asked my name in front of everyone. With all eyes on me, I muttered, Rebecca, and slid into my chair. I wanted to crawl under the table. He didn't know that I had barely made it uh, made it to the course because my old Monte Carlo was on its last leg. I limped it into the school parking lot after leaving a trail of heavy black smoke all the way down Memorial Drive. We began dating and finally married on a snowy day in March 1994. We drove to Rogers, Arkansas, and walked out onto a bluff overlooking Beaver Lake, a place where I practically grew up. The ceremony was beautiful. We set our vows in a foot of snow, and birds chattered in the background. On May 15, 1995, Chris and I had a child of our own. We named her Kristen Elizabeth, with my two girls, Andy and Melanie, and his son Christopher from his first marriage. We became a blended family. Our family had many good times together. We built campfires in the backyard, roasted hot dogs and marshmallows, and ate until we were stuffed. We had a small plastic pool in the backyard that was about two feet deep for the kids to swim in. One day, I looked out the back window, and Chris was in the pool with the kids. Being six foot three, he took up most of the pool, but the kids didn't seem to mind. They were jumping and splashing and having a great time. They rode on his back like he was a majestic sea monster, and the smiles and laughter were plentiful. I snapped some pictures of those golden moments. Then I brought them some homemade grape popsicles we had made from Kool-Aid. Chris ate one along with the kids and they sat on the lawn to dry off. Our Cocker Spaniel lady jumped around licking popsicle juice off of their arms. It was a picturesque moment. We had many memories like those. You guys, this is where I'm going to stop. Chapter 1, The Book Stolen. This is a true story written by my friend Rebecca DeMauro. This is a true story about her daughter, Andy, or Andrea Nicole Brewer. Andrea will be forever 12 years old. If you want to read more of this book yourself, you can pick this book up. At Amazon, you can get it Kindle, hardcover, or paperback. This is the paperback, and it is absolutely very good quality. It also has photos throughout the book of Andy. This was Andy. There are photos of her in the book. There are photos of her family in the book. There's photos, um, I believe, of her and her sister in the book. It has all kinds of photos. Um, I have read the book all the way through. This is a very, very 
important story in history for children's laws and children's rights. Like I said, my friend wrote this book, and it is a very powerful story. Um, if you're interested in meeting, re me reading more out of this book for you, please comment down below. Um, I can't like continue a year-long series. I, mean, I guess I could. It's up to you guys. But if you want to read this book yourself, and I'm telling you, it is worth it. It also will help my friend Rebecca continue as an author in her writing career. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I will do another part in this series, part three, where I will continue to read from either chapter one or chapter two. I'm not going to tell you right now. It's always going to be a surprise. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Let me know if you want more. Thank you so much. I love you, and I'll be vlogging you later.